This week we're continuing our series called Piercing the Darkness, and our emphasis is on Jesus calling his first disciples. Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee, and he saw some fishermen, and he said, come, follow me. But he didn't stop there. He also added, and I will help you fish for men. This wasn't just to come be a follower of Jesus. They also had to go and then pass that on to other people. Just like water, if it doesn't continue flowing, either becomes a murky swamp or the Dead Sea, we too, if we are not actively sharing our faith, become stagnant and irrelevant. So that's what we're focusing on this week. How to become fishers of men. How to tell the good news that we have. There's a hymn in our hymnal called O Zion Haste that we don't sing very often, but it's always been one of my favorites. It was written by a lady named Marianne Thompson. She was born in London, but she spent most of her life in Philadelphia. And one night she was up taking care of a child that was sick with typhoid fever. And she had a tune running through her head. And she said, you know, I'd really like to set some words to this tune that's in my head. She was a poet, she'd written him, so this was something that she had done. And she was thinking about missions and purpose in life, and dealing with her sick child and everything, and so this, oh Zion haste, we're not just here for our earthly life, she was thinking, you know, about beyond. And so she wrote these words, and a little bit later, she presented them to somebody who said, those words are really great, but let's put it to a new tune. Let's not put it with an existing tune because we want it to be a totally new hymn. And so together with an organist and composer, they wrote the tune Tidings, and that's what we sing it to now. I'm going to read the text for you, the first verse, so you know what it says. O oh Zion, haste, your mission high fulfilling, to tell to all the world that God is light that he who made all nations is not willing that one should perish, lost in shades of night. Publish glad tidings, tidings of peace, tidings of Jesus, redemption, and release. So that's our job as Christians, right? We're supposed to share, publish the tidings in whatever way we have. Maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's Instagram, maybe it's talking to your neighbor. Whatever means you have to share this good news, that's our job to do. So let me play this tune for you. They were published together in 1892, and it's just remained a favorite hymn through the years. <laughs> You can look it up in the green hymnal if you'd like, number 397, O Zion Haste. So I have an arrangement of this that I'm going to share with you this weekend. It's arranged by Lanny Smith, and it starts out with a trumpet fanfare, really fun part. I'm playing that on the second manual, which we call the swell. Let me play it for you. <laughs> stopped doesn't feel like that's where we want to stop. In music, if we were to assign each note of the scale a number, one through eight, one through seven really, one, two, three, four, five, five is important. We call that the dominant. And that dominant is the one that has this feeling of we want to go somewhere. It wants to take us back home. Home is number one. Here's one. Five. one more time. There's one. If you were here to sing, you would understand, it's time for me to sing verse 1. So then this arrangement, we have the solo in the left hand. As you saw, my left hand was down here, my right hand accompanying up on the choir. And then it swaps. So watch, here we go. So it 
goes through verse one like that, and then we have a little interlude, something that comes between the verses. Listen again and see if you can hear, are we ending on the tonic on the first of the scale, or are we ending on the dominant that wants to propel us on forward? I don't know about you, but if somebody stopped there, I'd be like, uh, but wait, there's more. There is more. We've got the last verse. And so we go back, continuing on, starting the melody on the tonic, number one. And so that's what's beautiful about music. We have this this tension about here's home, we have to go a little far out, out of our comfort zone, and then we get to come back. Sometimes our comfort zone is really nice and we don't want to go, we stay there for a while, and then we do go over to the dominant, and the dominant always reminds us that we want to come back home. And maybe that's something that you feel when you're trying to share the gospel or your faith. You just want to stay at home, it's comfortable here. But if you get out of your comfort zone, go over to that dominant, and then people will realize there's more, and then they might want to come back with you. I don't know. It's a musical analogy. We're going with it. The tonic and the dominant. So we get to the end. He brings back this fanfare idea at the end, and finally it resolves back to our comfortable dominant. So here we go, the very end. <laughs> So this week, I invite you to think about what glad tidings do you have to publish, and how are you going to publish them? Are you going to share it with a family member? Are you going to share it with a neighbor? Maybe there's someone you haven't talked to on the phone for a while. Give them a call. Post something on Facebook. It might be an inspiration to somebody you don't know. It doesn't have to be this big thing. You don't have to go out and preach a sermon to be able to share the good news that you have. I hope you enjoy this piece, and I look forward to talking with you again next week.